welcome. Uh, I'm Emilio. I'm the co-director of the MD together with Levent, who is also here. And since a few years ago, part of the promotion of, of the program or part of the events we do to promote the program is doing what we think is the best uh, to let you know how, what we do or what we expect our students to be interested in and doing and the kind of questions uh, we expect the MT students to be asking when doing research. And the best way to transmit that is through example and through having you interact and meeting uh, some of the faculty that will would be teaching you during the masters if we, if we admit you. So this time we are incredibly happy, incredibly happy, truly incredibly happy to have Roman Spanks um, talk about something that everybody's talking about, uh, which is how to allocate vaccines to people. Uh, but that I believe, I hope, can communicate how we as economists try to formalize these problems and try to tackle them for probably doing complicated math, but at least trying to say, say something a bit more meaningful than, than just a tweet. So I don't have anything else to say. I hope you enjoy this talk. I hope you realize how much we all enjoy what we do, which is doing research, asking ourselves questions, doing the best we can to answer them, and that you feel motivated to pursue uh, this kind of career in the future. And if you do, please find Levent or me so that we can talk a bit further about what the MTE is about. Uh, with nothing else to say for now, I'm just gonna let Romans talk. Please Roman, sorry I didn't give like a formal introduction uh, telling some everyone what how long your CV is. Roman's CV is super long and impressive. Uh, if you wanna read it, please go to his website. Uh, go ahead. Thanks again for being here. Thank you very much for the introduction, Emilia. Can you see the screen? Yes. Okay. Okay, then there we go. Uh, so today I shall talk about allocation of vaccines, how to allocate vaccines. Um, so how would I allocate them by contrast to how they're being allocated? So I need to compare my proposal with something. I will not be comparing it to the way vaccines are allocated in Mexico because vaccines happen to be allocated in Mexico perfectly. So instead, as my reference example, I will use the vaccine allocation mechanism used in the United States of America. Okay, so I hope you forgive me for this uh, uh, cosmopolitanism. So here is a warning. So this is a cartoon, uh, people are watching TV and on the TV there is a warning which says, the following contains scenes of people not accepting what they cannot change, viewer discretion is advised. So you might ask, what's the point of, in talking about vaccine allocation if there's nothing we can change about vaccine allocation? We're just good or bad, we accept the system the way it is. So one reason to look at it is because this is a big, important allocation mechanism uh, and we might encounter a similar problem in future. So even if we cannot change the way vaccines are being allocated now, maybe next time, we would do it differently and maybe even differently and better. Okay? And now is a good time to talk about vaccine allocation because everybody seems to be thinking about it. So it's a good time to get some you know, feedback on these ideas. And also another reason is just a coping mechanism. You cannot do anything about what's happening, but at least you can you know, spend your time thinking about it and trying to understand it. Uh, is the system good? Is the system not good? How it could have been improved. So here is how vaccines are allocated in the US and I'll claim the allocation mechanism is not ideal. So the allocation mechanism is a priority list, but it's much more complicated than in Mexico in a sense that it's not just by age, but there are a lot of small categories. 
you know, so who are healthcare workers seems to be an ambiguous and long-term care facility residents. But then you have to decide who is a frontline worker. And then the government decides who is that and issues recommendations. And those recommendations might or might not be followed depending on the state. Uh, then there are essential workers not included into the frontline essential workers. Again, some social planner has to decide who those people are. Um, so the list actually is much more complicated than the simple charts that you see here. Yeah. So what are the shortcomings of the current system used in the US? So I shall illustrate these shortcomings by browsing through some six or so newspaper headlines. So newspaper headlines is not science, is not kind of serious empirical work, but just as illustration to illustrate the ideas. Okay. And the headlines are from December, January, because since then it's been more of the same thing. You know, the same problems keep arising, you keep seeing the same headlines. Okay. So one problem with the vaccine allocation as I've outlined it to you with the priority list is that it's inefficient. So in what sense? Not necessarily people who value vaccines most are the people who are getting the vaccines. So in particular, healthcare workers have priority, but many of them, you know, to the order of 40% or so, do not want to get them. Okay, so a large number has been allocated to a certain group that doesn't value them at all. Okay? And at the same time, there are people who value them, but they cannot get them. Okay, and you would think, well, if the healthcare worker has refused the vaccine, quickly give it to somebody else, say in the same hospital. Mm, there should be plenty of volunteers, but that's actually illegal. So in the state of New York, the governor issued an executive order saying, uh, I'm issuing an order increasing penalties for providers that intentionally disregard prioritization. Uh, administration to a person knowingly not eligible may result in a penalty for the provider of up to $1 million and revocation of all state licenses. Okay? So if you opened a freezer with vaccines and you vaccinated the frontline workers who wanted to have them, and then you have some vaccines left over, you cannot really give it to anybody else. Okay, they have to expire, you have to destroy them. So this is the inefficiency. Okay. Another problem uh, with the mechanism, you might say it's not incentive compatible or it's gameable. Um, there are incentives for people you know, to lie whether they belong to a certain priority group uh, or not. Uh, and in particular, this is a headline, I think even from December, in which a certain hospital um, reported that employees started turning against each other and they were pretending that they work with COVID patients when they do not work with COVID patients just to get vaccinated. Okay, So what's the problem with this gaming? You could say, well, maybe just this gaming is efficient. People who are more passionate are getting vaccines. Not necessarily so. Mm, well, people who are more passionate and better at gaming the system are getting the vaccines, but not necessarily the people who value them most. So if the allocation mechanism is gameable and people who are good at gaming would benefit and people who are bad at gaming would lose, and this is not necessarily what the social planner would want to see. So another example of gameability, wealthy patients you know, are willing to pay somebody to help them navigate the system and get access to the vaccines, okay, to get access to priority allocation of vaccines. Again, you could say that, well, maybe it's a good thing. People who put greater monetary value on vaccines get them. Uh, I'm not saying it isn't, uh, but I'm saying that gameability per se is a problem. Resources are being wasted in the course of uh, gameability as people are trying to game the system. And also the outcome of the mechanism will not be what the government is telling you it will be because we don't know what it's going to be because we know that people will game the system and not behave the way um, you know, the designers of the system think the system will, you know, that, that they will behave in the system. And the third and final kind of limitation of the current system I'd like to emphasize that it's uh, corruptible or vulnerable to influence activities in the following sense, uh, in the sense of the headline actually. So the headline says from the New York Times, Companies, unions, and industry trade associations are lobbying governments to include their workers in the next round of virus vaccines. Okay. So what's the problem with this? The problem with this is that you get a system designed 
under the influence from some lobby groups. And what you get as a result might not reflect you know, the social preference of who should get the vaccines and when these people should get the vaccines. So groups who are better organized will get the vaccines first. Groups that are not well organized but could be equally meritorious will not get the vaccines first. So say teachers unions are strong, so school teachers could get vaccines first, but say university teachers might not. And it's not obvious that the social planner would like to differentiate between the two groups. Yeah. And here is another headline example of corruptibility of the system. So some vaccines were shipped to a hospital in Palo Alto, and then the hospital had to decide um, who gets vaccinated first. And of course, the bureaucrats were in charge of deciding who gets vaccinated first. So they decided that bureaucrats themselves should be vaccinated first, not the frontline workers. Yeah, so that's an example of, of a subverted allocation mechanism. Okay, and a bonus limitation of the current system is that it's a little ridiculous in what sense? In the sense that it features uh, in a humorous mag magazine, The Onion, which says, the nation enters a new phase of vaccine distribution in which Capricans, gymnasts, childless uncles are now eligible for inoculation. Okay. So why is that supposed to be hilarious? It's supposed to be hilarious because uh, of how arbitrary some of the um, priorities are interpreted to be and narrow okay? and how convoluted the system seems to be. So why is ridiculous a problem? Ridiculous is a problem because it undermines the legitimacy of the government. And if you believe that government has a useful role to play in the society as I do, then it's a loss. Okay. So what could be an alternative? What we could do differently? Okay. So we, t we can take inspiration from sponsored search. So one, of the points that I'd like to make is that you don't have to be particularly smart uh, or kind of well informed to design something that would be actually pretty good and on some dimensions would be superior to the current system. In a sense that you might think that the vaccine allocation problem on this scale is novel, but there have been precedents both uh, during other inoculation campaigns, but also in other domains. So in particular, I would like to borrow some ideas from the domain of online advertising. Okay. So this is what a search page looks like, Google search page looks like for me. If I disable my ad blocker, if you do not have it disabled, you won't see any, uh, any ads. So I disable this ad blocker and then I Google running shoes for women. And all I get for the first, you know, Page, some entries are just advertisements. So they are marked by this ads prefix. Okay. And they appear in a certain order. Okay. And you might ask yourself, so who decides which advertisements, advertisement appears first and which appears second and which appears third and which are the advertisements that appear? And the answer is that for 20 years or so, uh, it was an auction that was designing, deciding which ad appears where. So what's happening in the background, whenever you Google something up, you enter some keywords, certain advertisers bid on those keywords, for example, running shoes. Okay? So Adidas, Nike bids for those. So immediately, as soon as you enter a search term, uh, an auction is run. And who bids in this auction? These are not some administrators at Adidas and Nike, not humans. These are computer algorithms who are programmed to bid optimally in an auction on behalf of the advertisers. And then the highest bidder gets the first position, which is considered to be the most desirable. The second highest bidder gets the second position, uh, which is less desirable. The third highest gets the third position and so on. And you can start seeing some parallels with vaccine allocation. Yeah. Some parallels, but also differences. So what are the parallels? So the counterparts of um, positions on the page are positions in the vaccination queue. And the counterparts of bidders, advertisers 
are individuals who would like to get inoculated. Yeah? And what we have to do, we have to determine an order in which we're inoculating people. Okay? And, and this is the analogy to the order that Google determines to display the ads. And even what's similar is the maximization of the objective function. So if you are the social planner, you would, well, if I'm the social planner, I would like to maximize efficiency in some sense. Okay. So this is actually the objective of Google as well. So you might think perhaps Google would be worried more about profit than efficiency, but it's not at all obvious because Google faces competition from other advertising platforms, um, some of which are search platforms, others not search platforms from Bing, from Yahoo, where people go <clears throat> to do search. Uh, so therefore to attract advertisers, it has to offer a good deal to advertisers. So it has to you know, take care of the surplus of the advertisers. So it cannot depress it too low, which would be the case if it were maximizing profit. Yeah. So as an approximation, we can think that the Google also maximizes profit. Yeah. But my analysis will not depend on this assumption. I'm just pointing out that there are more similarities than you might think uh, of initially between the sponsored search context and the vaccine allocation context. What are the differences? So what seems to be of the first order in vaccine allocation are externalities. I would argue that externalities are probably also important in sponsored search, but they are not probably not as important. And they're not emphasized in the auction that's used to allocate uh, advertisements. But the vaccines, kind of, if you care whether your relatives got vaccinated, whether the people you work with got vaccinated, if you're a university, you care whether your students and staff and faculty got vaccinated, and the sooner they get vaccinated, the sooner you can reopen. If you are a health insurer, a public or private, you would like your patients to be vaccinated so that they do not find themselves admitted to a hospital with a severe case of COVID, and then you would have to face the hospital bills. So there are a lot of externalities which are not that prominent in sponsored search. Okay. So what I'll do, I'll propose to you an auction uh, which um, is based uh, on the kinds of auctions that are used to allocate sponsored ad search, um, is a sponsored ads, um, with a caveat that I will accommodate externalities. Okay. Any questions at this point before I proceed to the description of the environment and the auction? Okay, I proceed to the description of the environment. So here is the vaccine auction. The environment is this. So the items that were allocated are the time slots at which individuals are vaccinated. And the bidders are individuals who seek to be vaccinated, but also firms and also government agencies and perhaps charities and non-governmental organizations and hospitals and health insurers, universities, in Starbucks of this world and you know, anyone can participate. Okay? Not only the human beings who get inoculated. Okay? Why? Uh, because everybody has interest in the outcome of the auction because there are externalities, okay? as I described in the example with the university. Okay, so what are, what are the bids? So I can submit just one bid on my own behalf if I am Roman's banks, but I can also submit behalf uh, bids on behalf of other people. So I can submit a bid on behalf of Trijip Sharma and Andrei Gomberg because they're my co-authors and I don't want them to die before our paper is published. And maybe on behalf of my cleaner because he comes and goes, she comes and goes. And I don't want to be exposed to anything unnecessarily. And maybe I even care about her altruistically. Yeah. And firms similarly can submit bids on behalf of multiple other bidders on behalf of the employees, for example. Okay. So the difference from the um, sponsored ad search is that I submit not just one bid on my own behalf, but I'm, I'm free to submit multiple bids also on behalf of other people. Okay. And that was the environment, now the auction, the allocation rule and the payment rule. Okay. So the allocation rule works as follows. 
for every individual, we compute the aggregate bids submitted on behalf of this individual. And then we vaccinate in the descending order of the total bids submitted on one's behalf. So we identify a human being with the highest total amount of bids submitted on his or her behalf. And this is the person who is vaccinated first. Then the person with the highest, second highest aggregate bid is vaccinated second and so on. So that's the allocation rule. What's the payment rule? So the payment rule will be the externality that one's bidding in the auction imposes on other participants in the auction. Okay, so the payment will not be the sum of the bids that I have submitted. I'm not paying what I bid. So if you've seen the first price auction and the second price auction, it's more like a second price auction rather than the first price auction. In the second price auction, I pay the highest losing bid, not my own bid. And that highest losing bid actually happens to be an externality that I'm imposing um, on others by winning the item because I'm depriving the second highest bidder of the item. And that's the social kind of surplus that can be generated in my absence. So something similar will be happening here with the payment in this auction. I'm paying the externality that I'm imposing on other bidders as revealed by their bids. Okay. So for example, you know, suppose I work at Starbucks and suppose Starbucks bids on my behalf and Starbucks is so generous that you know, as a result of Starbucks's bidding, uh, my order in the vaccination queue got bumped up by one position and I swapped places say with Emilia. Okay, so what will Starbucks end up paying? The Starbucks will end up paying the externality it imposes on Emilia from him dropping one position down. So presumably he's impatient, so he would like to get vaccinated earlier, but he drops one position down and that's worth something to him. So the payment that Starbucks will make on my behalf will equal the externality Starbucks is bidding on my behalf imposes on Emilia, but also on everybody who cares about Emilia. So if Itam bids on Emilia's behalf, then Itam suffers because Emilia is vaccinated later. So that externality is factored in and perhaps Emilia's family bids on behalf of Emilia, his friends and co-authors bid on his behalf. So all that will add up to the payment that Starbucks will have to make, okay. and which will not be kind of directly related to the bid that Starbucks has submitted on my behalf. Okay. And maybe say my bid is so small on my behalf that it actually doesn't affect my position in the queue. So if my bidding on my behalf doesn't affect my position in the queue, then my bidding doesn't impose any externality on other participants in the auction. Therefore, I will end up paying nothing. Okay. Any questions? Well, let me let me let me ask a question. Oops. Uh, yeah. About the allocation rule. Um, if we want to say something about people getting vaccinated, one of the realities of the world is that two people can get vaccinated at the same time because there are different hospitals. And the same hospital, there are different doctors or other personnel who are giving these injections. Mm -hmm. Now, if I were to sort of take your allocation rule and sort of adapt it to this richness of the real world, mm -hmm. right? say, you know, if you and I have the same total bits, then we get vaccinated at the same time. Uh, but of course, you know, that need not happen, which means your allocation rule will typically have a lot of doctors, health personnel, hospitals empty, even though they could be actually giving injections. Um, so have you thought about how to adapt to this situation? Okay, so the question is about the logistics of all this. How do we ensure that everybody is vaccinated exactly in the same order that the auction would like them to no, be vaccinated? No, no, no I, I, I think I mis, mis explained myself. That is not the question. The question is that the allocation space is perhaps quite mechanically more complicated than what you're giving it credit for in the sense that two people, many people, 
can feasibly be vaccinated at the same time, right? So, yeah. So if I were to take your allocation rule and account for this multiplicity of you know time slots, or you know that multiple people can be vaccinated at the same time, then your allocation rule would suggest that if you and I have the same total bids submitted for us, then we should be submitted, we should be vaccinated at the same time. But if you're not, suppose that there are only two people on earth and there are two places where the vaccination is going to happen, right? If you get different number of total bids, then one doctor will be, you know, at some, at some time, time zone, one doctor will be sort of, you know, one, one slot will be unfilled. So this pretty much, there's a, there's a matching component, matching with, what do you call it? There's slots or priorities now. I don't know that literature very well, but there's also this component of, you know, you have to, you know, to make better use so of for it. There's another notion of efficiency, okay, that seems to suggest that hospitals shouldn't be open for nothing. Is that, is that making sense? I don't know if that's what you mean by logistics. But uh, yeah. I, I can easily imagine a more complicated allocation space where it's not, you know, it's not just, you know, time slots are not completely ordered, right? It's as if Google is, you know, able to present at the same spot, various ads at the same spot. Yeah, so this is what I called logistics. Uh, and the question then is you have a bunch of people who, who are supposed to be vaccinated and you know, this week, where do you send them? Which hospitals? So that every hospital vaccinates at full capacity. So what I'm trying to say is that given that multiple vaccinations can be done in the same spot, in, in the same time zone, you and I, you know, as part of your allocation mechanism, it may very well be the case that we have two very different total bids given to us, but we end up yes. in the same time zone. So that, that's all. Yes. That can be done, that the auction uh, accommodates. That's but the short answer. The auction accommodates this. Okay. Yes. Yes. But you have to change yes. your environment a little bit, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I know. Uh, so maybe I'll go, let, let me go into, I wasn't planning to show some, the math, but let me show some math. And then you will correct me if I, I'm wrong in my answer that my auction accommodates. So let me um, Wait, describe the- for a minute, just to just to make an announcement, if, uh, this is not a conversation between the people with their camera on, or it's not supposed to just be that. Of course, we're happy. I'm happy to talk to everyone here. So, because there's many of us in the audience, if anybody has a question, please post it on the chat board, and I will be going through those questions and trying to summarize and and finding the best time to bring them up to romance and less romance sees them and chooses to answer them um, at some point during the talk. So please do not stay quiet. Please participate. And let's make this a bit more of an interactive dynamic exercise. OK? Sorry, Romans. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is the only slide with math that I have for the map minded, just to be clear, what's the underlying environment and the auction? Uh, or maybe actually two slides. So this is the environment. There are slots that are being allocated and then there are bidders. Okay. Slot is denoted by T, a bidder is denoted by I or J belonging to the script J set. Okay. And the payoff of bidder I uh, is the following. So minus P is the, is the payment that the individual makes to the auctioneer. And then there is this double sum. So this is how I model the valuation of a bidder of bidder i. Okay. The double sum is over time and over every uh, other bidder uh, in the population, including the bidder i himself. Okay. So what is xjt? xjt is an indicator function. It's one if j gets vaccinated at time t and it's zero otherwise. So if, and it can be one only at one time when Mr. j is vaccinated. So at the time when Mr. j is vaccinated, then the following alpha S payoff term kicks in. Okay. So S uh, alpha T is the common, I'll, I'll call it discount factor, common for all bidders. And then S I J uh, is the valuation that Mr. Um, I puts on Mr. J. So very roughly you can 
think of SIJ as being how much Mr. I values the life of Mr. J, very roughly. And then alpha T, you can view it uh, as what's the, by how many percentage points does the vaccine reduce your mortality risk at a particular time T. So presumably early in the pandemic, kind of in January, uh, your mortality risk is reduced a lot by a vaccine because your chances of catching the vaccine are very large. Okay. If you get vaccinated kind of in August, then the chances are there is already herd immunity in the population. So the vaccine, even if it's very effective, it will not you know, make much of a difference for your survival because the chances are you will already have had COVID by that time or there'll be herd immunity and you'll be very unlikely to catch it, okay? So this alpha T, it varies over time. So presumably it decreases over time. Um, and if kind of a lot of people get vaccinated um, at about the same time, then this alpha T will be very similar for them. So you, you should think of T not as calendar time, as economic time, as the time when teeth individual in line is vaccinated. So you can have a lot of alpha T's which are very, very close to each other, uh, which would correspond or could be the same, all these alpha T's could be the same, which would correspond to the auction prescribing that all these people get vaccinated on the same day or the same week. So, in my response to Levent, when I was saying that the auction accommodates what I understood Levent wanted the auction to accommodate, I meant that I can allow alpha T to be you know, a constant for many, many, many T's. This is not, yeah. And I do not know whether this is what Levent had in mind or not. Well, I would have to think about if this is what I meant. I mean, you are basically sort of incorporating this in the payoff environment, but I would, uh, I mean, my instinct would be to uh, to uh, incorporate it in the, uh, sort of what I would call the physical environment, which is the first thing mm -hmm. that you said, in that capital script T is a linearly ordered set, like time would be, but I would probably make it a cube or something like this, uh, because I could get, uh, I mean, right, I mean, I could, you know, same time, so I could get the vaccine, you know, the vaccines are given at the same time spot in different locations, as well as at the same location. So, you know, I try to way, find a way to sort of structure slots like that. Now, I'm not sure if going that way and what you're doing are exactly the same thing. I would have to think about that, but, you know, we can move on. Mm -hmm. So as an extreme case of, what I understand the vent is trying to get across, let's imagine the situation in which there is a shipment of vaccines once a month on the first Monday of the month, and then the vaccination capacity is unlimited, so everybody can be, limit, can be vaccinated on that Monday. So then there would be a bunch of people who are getting vaccinated on one Monday every month. So then uh, I would have a bunch of alphas. You know, if thousand vaccines get shipped to a particular, okay, a million vaccines get shipped. Shall we make it 5 million? 5 million vaccines are getting shipped. Uh, let me make it 10. 10 million vaccines are being shipped uh, on a first Monday of the month. Then uh, that would mean that alpha uh, one, two, ta, 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 all the way to alpha 10 million will be the same and some number, maybe 0.5. And then we'll wait till the next month and then alpha 1, uh, 10 million and one uh, will be the same as ta -ta 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 -ta, alpha, alpha 20 million and it will equal say 0.4. So it will be kind of a step function. Alphas will be a step function and people will be vaccinated on the 1st of January, 1st of February, 1st of March, and so on. Okay? So I would incorporate it into alphas. I incorporate it into alphas. Okay? So if you do that and you assume that 
alpha is decreasing over time, with the decreasing over time, then it's optimal to allocate vaccines to people in the descending order of the aggregate bids on their behalf. Romans, uh, just to, I have two comments. One is, I think that it may be useful for the audience if you could define what you mean by efficiency. And the second is that my intuition, I'm not a theorist, but my intuition is telling me that this Oops. whole system breaks if you can, if people can bid and choose among different vaccines with different effectiveness, right? That kind of related mm -hmm. to what? Yes, that's right. So, so we do not want, okay, everything is fine if um, we can predict the order in which the vaccines uh, are going to be approved. And we know that we shall vaccinate you know, 20 million people with Pfizer vaccine. And then we know that after that, we shall switch to I don't know, Johnson & Johnson or AstraZeneca vaccine. So knowing that would help very much. And then we you would also have to know when vaccination is the relative effectiveness of the two vaccines. So you can accommodate it at the expense of the assumptions, which are really unrealistic knowing exactly when the new vaccine will arrive and how effective it will be. So you're right, the implicit assumption here is that you're basically getting vaccinated everybody with the same vaccine and you suddenly do not get a vaccine that's um, more um, effective. Actually, if you're suddenly getting a vaccine which is less effective, that's okay. So the current scenario in which everybody is getting vaccinated with Moderna and Pfizer, which are about the same, have about the same efficacy, and very high efficacy. Now, um, countries are getting approved, countries, the US will probably approve Johnson & Johnson, then it will approve AstraZeneca, and the effectiveness is declining with the new kind of vaccine. That will be fine for the auction, for this auction. So everything will go without any changes. Um, that will be fine. What will not be fine if you have AstraZeneca first and then Pfizer comes in, a more effective vaccine comes in. It's a very good question. I don't know if you also want to, there's two questions in the chat room, one by Diego and one by Alfredo Gastelum, uh, who are asking very specific questions about the alpha T. So I'd be more comfortable if you grab them and try to give an answer to them. Mm -hmm. So Diego says, alpha T will depend on the mechanism used for vaccinating as it may depend on who is vaccinated and who is not vaccinated. Would this be something relevant in order to choose your bids? The answer is no, the way I imagine it. Um, so let me tell you kind of a secret the way I imagine it. Uh, I'll, I'll get back to this question after the next slide, after I've revealed this secret. Um, so here is the, the next slide. Oh, actually, where are the facts? Oh, here are the facts. This is the next slide. So I'll get back to Diego's question. So what are the properties of the described auction? It's a VCG auction. Okay? So it's a class of mechanisms uh, which are known to have kind of nice properties. What are these nice properties? Efficiency. Emilia asks what I mean by efficiency. By efficiency, I mean the following. So look at the third bullet point, Mr. I's payoff. So let me add up everybody's payoffs. All, so I'm in addition now adding up over individual I. So everybody's payoffs plus the auctioneer's payoff, which is the sum of bids. Then the bids just cancel out. And what we are left with is the sum of the sums for all individuals I in the economy. So by efficiency, I mean, um, if, if I say the auction is efficient, I mean, it chooses the allocation rule X for who gets vaccinated when, such that the sum uh, of payoffs uh, that individuals derive from the vaccination schedule is maximized. So this is a utilitarian notion of, uh, it's not a utilitarian notion of efficiency, it's a notion of efficiency for an environment with transferable utility. Okay. 
if utility is transferable, then you do not really care about distribution and distributional implications of an auction because you can always correct them just by taxing some people and giving money to other people. So if utility is transferable, you can separate the, the questions of distributional um, justice from the questions of efficiency. Okay? So I assume the underlying big, uh, big underlying assumption is transferable utility. Okay? And the notion of efficiency is the sum of the sums here. So the VCG auction is known to be efficient. Okay? It's also strategy proof in the sense that it's simple uh, for people to bid, they just bid the evaluations. Um, doesn't matter what others bid, doesn't matter how good others are bidding, whatever that means. Uh, you don't have to think about it as a bid. The only thing you have to think about is say, how much do I value reducing uh, the, the probability of dying from COVID by one percentage point? But, and how much I value, yeah. But, but that's my question. Something? I mean, the, the, it's me, Diego. Uh, so and that's that, that's yeah. my question. Your your valuation depends on the uh, on the actual um, uh, allocation of of vaccines because it, it it may be different for me alpha at time t if everybody's already vaccinated than if nobody's vaccinated. So depending on 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 the order. So this valuation usually in the in, in, in in the standard PCG environment, your valuation need not depend on 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 the full uh, allocation of of the of the goods. So I, I'm not sure whether this remains. Uh, I mean, how will I know my my valuation if I'm unsure about how the about who else is going to get the, the 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 vaccines and how that will depend on and how that will will lead to a different alpha for me. Mm -hmm. So if you are getting vaccinated at time ten million, it means that you are the ten millionth individual who got vaccinated. Yeah. So alpha will reflect that. It will be smaller uh, because the vaccine will be less valuable for you at that time. Because maybe by that time, kind of, it, you already caught the virus, but also it will be less valuable to you uh, because more people will have immunity thanks to the vaccine. So you will be less likely to catch the virus. So alpha will incorporate this simple concern of how many people got vaccinated before you got vaccinated. Uh, but uh, what I'm saying is that it doesn't only depend on the if I'm the one million or not, or, but, but it also depends on who is before me. So if everybody exactly. in my family is vaccinated, then I'm not going to get COVID. Uh, I don't care if people in New York are getting vaccinated. If everybody who I'm around is vaccinated, that's what depends on my key. And that's where I'm not sure how that works. But, uh, uh, maybe we can talk about this uh, later because it may be more technical than, than what we want. No, I understand the question. The answer is the identity of the person who gets vaccinated is not captured by this. So what you would yeah. like to be captured is not captured. Okay. So for example, I would care about these super spreaders who got vaccinated before me or people in the retirement home who I never meet and who pose no danger to me. So this is not captured by the auction. That's a limitation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have efficiency, we have strategy proofness. So strategy proofness means that the mechanism is not kind of vulnerable to gaming. Um, you just have to be honest. You do not have to think how to lie optimally. You don't have to think how others will play the game. So the mechanism doesn't reward people who are good at gaming. Okay? By contrast to the priority list that I mentioned at the beginning it is being used in other places. Okay? Then another feature of ECG mechanisms is that what, what I call inattentive bidding is efficiently inattentive. What do I mean, mean by this? So you might be concerned that some people might not have strong incentives to figure out how much they value their own life or the lives of their family members or other people they might care, care about or not care about. And then you might think this could lead to um, 
inefficiency? But the answer is no. In the VCG mechanism, you're, under appropriate assumptions, your private incentives to acquire information are aligned with the social incentives to acquire information. So it's true that you, you might be lazy and you might not acquire um, too much information about how much you know, your life is worth to you or your grandmother's life is worth to you, but that's okay. That's the, what the social planner would want you to do too, because your incentives are aligned with the incentives of the social planner. So another feature, which is not a general feature of the VCG mechanism, but applies to this example, this application, there is no need to forecast the pandemic. Okay, so what I mean by this, so there are these alphas and these alphas depend on various things and uh, they depend on how fast the, the pandemic progresses. So maybe it progresses very fast so that if I'm the 10 millionth to be vaccinated, it's too late. Everybody has got COVID by then already and the vaccine is not worth much to me. So alpha depends on the evolution of the pandemic. Alpha also depends on how effective the vaccine is. And this is something that nobody might know um, at the time of bidding. Um, the government might not know it. I mean, bidders might not know it. And the trick here is that, well, it's not necessary to know it to administer the auction and create the incentives to bid truthfully. So the idea here again is borrowed from positions auctions. So in positions auctions, there is similar uncertainty about how much every position is worth. So how much the position is worth to you depends on how much people click on it, but how much do I, how, how can I know what's the ratio of people who click on the first position versus the second position? And maybe this depends on whether I'm Googling uh, computers or cell phones or cars. Yeah, so we don't know that very well either. Um, so well, what's done in the auction environment, in the, in the positions auction environment, um, these payments are assessed exposed. Okay? So you bid on the slot and then we see how much people clicked on the first position, second, third position, and then you pay accordingly. So you can do, um, you can administer payments here similarly exposed. So note that for the, to determine what the allocation rule is, you don't have to know alphas. You just have to know that alphas are decreasing over time so that you allocate first to the bidders with the highest aggregate bid. Okay? Um, but you do need to know what exactly alphas are to administer payoffs, to compute payoffs. Okay? And it's important to compute payoffs right because uh, incentive compatibility will depend on this. Strategy proofness will depend on this. So the way you, you can do it right, you can compute the payoffs exposed and you can administer them exposed. So you can ask people to deposit something in escrow. And then once the pandemic has played out, you can actually take the money from their account where they have deposited their bids. Okay? So after the pandemic uh, has, played out, you can see how bad it was in January, February, March, April, how many people died, what fraction the, of the population got it, how effective the vaccine was, and then you can administer the payments exposed. Okay? So this is the sense in which you do not need to do economic uh, epidemiological forecasting. Instead, you can just wait and see and observe and then administer payments exposed. So this is no need to forecast the pandemic. Okay. And then vaccine skeptics are welcome. And the, the auction doesn't assume that everybody likes a vaccine, so you can submit negative bids. So if you don't want to get vaccinated, then you submit a negative bid okay, on your own behalf. Okay. And if kind of Levent wants to get vaccinated, but for some reason I don't want him to get vaccinated, I can submit a very, very negative bid on his behalf. Okay. And then Emilio can submit a positive bid on his behalf. Okay, so negative bids are allowed. But does that fix it though? Let's say my grandma doesn't want to get vaccinated, but all her family does. So we all bid. She's in first place, but she still doesn't want to get vaccinated. Does so she refuses to do it. So she's actually not the first one vaccinated. Does, does, does it matter that people actually use their slot? If 
whenever they whenever they're assigned the time to get the vaccine, does it matter that they go and get it? Yes, it does. Then, then how, it how would we uh, account for vaccine skeptics, right? Um, it accounts for them, just not in the way you would like uh, it to account for them. Okay. If you have ne a negative valuation, feel free to express it. And if it's sufficiently negative, it will be heated and you will not get vaccinated. But if, if you are just a little bit skeptical, but the positive externality from you getting vaccinated is huge for everybody else, then the social planet, I shouldn't use that word, gets you vaccinated, but the society gets you vaccinated and the society can create incentives uh, to, to you know, make vaccine skeptics go and get vaccinated. You can say you cannot enter any government building if you are not vaccinated. You cannot take a plane if you are not vaccinated. I realize that that's unlikely to be implemented anywhere. So that's a bit of a <clears throat> weak point, perhaps. But that's what efficiency would say. Yeah. Weigh the costs to the skeptics against the benefits to the non-skeptics. OK, so let me briefly summarize some limitations um, of this approach you know, relative to other approaches. So what could be the objections to the auction that I've described? So one is that bidding on lives is a bit uncomfortable. So people might not want to bid on behalf of themselves because then you have to think for yourself how much you value being alive. Is it you know, $5,000, $10,000, maybe $15,000, a million dollars? Uh, and maybe people just don't like thinking about such things. Or if you're bidding a, on behalf of your grandmother, then you think you know, if you, you'll bid very little and then you'll be haunted by the fact that she got vaccinated late and uh, got COVID and died. So you, you just might feel that it doesn't feel right to assign a price to the life of your grandmother. Yeah. And then in addition, you also and it might feel a bit uncomfortable uh, about others learning uh, how much you value your grandmother. So suppose your grandmother knows you're rich and then she receives a ticket and the ticket says that she gets vaccinated very late. So then she'll know that you didn't bid on her very much if at all. And that's kind of awkward. So that's one objection. Maybe you would prefer the social planner to decide who gets vaccinated when. Uh, there is a way to deal with this. So this way to deal with this has been um, developed for VCG mechanisms in general and it applies for this auction. Um, it, it's called uh, differentially private auctions, uh, sorry, mechanisms. So what you are doing in those mechanism, you are, mechanisms, you are just introducing a little bit of noise to the allocation rule and to payments. So then if your grandmother gets vaccinated late, then you can just tell her, well, you know, there is randomness in the mechanism and in spite of me bidding a lot, um, you got to be vaccinated pretty late, but that's not because I bid very little. So there will be some plausible deniability uh, when you are talking to other people, but also when your future self looks at your past self, you can always you know, think, well, that's the randomness in the mechanism. It's not my fault. I wasn't people okay. So another you know, serious you constraint. If you have like five minutes left before three minutes to eight, and I'm sure some of our students probably want to go have dinner. So I'm happy staying a bit longer with you to talk about this if you Oops. wish. But, but wrapping mm -hmm. up for those who have to leave would be best. Okay, yeah. So uh, another you know, serious problem is credit constraints. The implicit assumption or explicit assumption in the auction I described was that nobody is credit constrained mm. in this economy. But maybe somebody kind of values being vaccinated a lot, but doesn't have cash. So maybe the poor happen to be the ones who are very sick, but they don't have an, happen to have any cash to bid. So then they would be the last to be vaccinated while the social planner would want them to be vaccinated first. So if credit constraints is an issue, this auction wouldn't be a good allocation mechanism. Even a lottery would, be, would do better. And the final objection would be that I'm trying to import some efficiency ideas from other domains, but maybe people do not want efficiency 
in allocation of vaccines. Maybe they want something else. Maybe they want some notion of egalitarianism. Maybe they believe that everybody should have the same access to uh, health goods and in particular to vaccines. So ex ante in a fair lottery, which gives everybody the same chance uh, to get a vaccine early, perhaps is the way to go. Okay. So if, if efficiency is not the objective, then perhaps doing something else might be better. Okay. So these are the objections. Um, let me conclude with these slides, which is a quote from Hannah Arendt, which uh, says that evil comes from a failure to think. Uh, so I think kind of the greatest value of doing economics at the time is actually teaches you to think um, to interpret institutions, mechanisms critically, the society critically, uh, and to detect kind of little inefficiencies. And how do you detect inefficiencies? You try to build a, an efficient benchmark like this auction, and you compare reality to this auction, and uh, you think, well, it looks like there is some inefficiency in reality, and you might kind of want to fix it in the future. Or today you might wish not to be complicit uh, in the institution that, uh, that is inefficient. Yeah. So this is all I wanted to say. And let me take any questions now, if there are any. So can I ask a question here? Uh, Mr. Sharma, yes. So uh, there might also be some ex post regret in the sense that your SIJ is not dependent on T. So, so essentially, mm -hmm. I might want my, I want to be vaccinated perhaps only after my grandfather, grandmother is, right? So, so since SIJ is devoid of T, exposed there might be a regret now while this might be efficient a government might not want to use it because it does not want an exposed revolution or they don't you don't want voters to vote against you exposed that's right so you getting vaccinated before your grandmother sorry, after your grandmother, is not guaranteed. Um, and you're saying that we should give you, okay, we shouldn't give that guarantee to you. If somebody else wants you to, to be vaccinated first, perhaps his feelings are strong enough that you should be overruled, but you should be able to express this preference, even if afterwards it's overruled. And the auction that I've described doesn't have a language for you to express this preference. So you can submit a large bid on behalf of your grandmother and small on behalf of yourself. Um, and perhaps that would be sufficient, but if it isn't- I mean, it is, Perhaps, but you cannot rule it out. So then you have to oh, so think you... about the distribution of such preferences to say that that will happen with a very small probability. So the issue is how large is large it would depend now on the rest of the population and knowing something about, so, so it might not be strategy proof and it might be complicated. I mean, so, so, but to, so th there's a trade-off between complication and being voted out of office, perhaps. I agree with everything you've said. It's on the spot, correct. Yeah, I have nothing to add. So there's a related issue about the language of bids in your, in your auction. Yes. On the one hand, then, you know, perhaps the possibility of a more complicated valuation structure. For instance, I may be the kind of person who would like to bid on my parents getting vaccinated together um, and only together, because suppose that they are both 90 years old and I don't want one to live and the other one to die. I want them to live together or to die together. Just suppose, just you know. what I'm trying to suggest is there may be hidden complementarities or substitutions in you know, my, my sort of view of who should be vaccinated and who shouldn't, um, that cannot be sort of uh, uh, expressed in bids the way you've suggested, just one per person. Mm -hmm. That's so right. 
the other thing is, of course, I mean, of course, this is an unfair comment, but you know, do you think that transferable utility, perfect transferable utility, is the right uh, caricature of the world when it comes to vaccination? You're basically saying that I may uh, increase your possibility of death uh, quite a bit and give you a lot of money and compensate you for it. But many people will probably not think that way. So this minus PI business is probably not the best caricature of the world. It may be so for, I don't know, art, works of art or, you know, places in the uh, Google search um, um, ads. If you're thinking, of, I, I'm not sure if people's minds are wired to think that way. Uh, so there, there were two comments here, not one. Um, so one was about transferable utility, which is distinct from complementarities. Yes, so yes, you I'm... could have complementary. Okay, yeah. So complementarities are not captured. Uh, I can imagine a language to express those complementarities. It's not very complicated, so you can... Um, it's not very complicated, but it will complicate the computation of the allocation rule in this auction. It will not be any more so simple as saying we add up bids on your behalf and we see whose aggregate bids are the largest and we give vaccines to those people first. And then it might be a little bit difficult to explain it to people and sell it to people when it's very complicated and you have to solve some combinatorial allocation problem, which nobody understands. It may also be difficult so, to come up with these combinatorial valuations in, for themselves in their minds, given how many people are around us in our society, in our you know, circle, in our circle of life. Right? Yes, but you can give those, you can give people an option, say, to tick in addition to submitting evaluation on behalf of your mother and your father, you can also tick both names and say, if both of them get vaccinated, here is the adjustment term, how much more I'm willing to pay or how much less I'm willing to pay if I view the vaccination as substitute. No, no, I understand that you can adapt the VCG mechanism for competition yes. and it will preserve its properties. I'm just saying that, is it reasonable for us to expect people to be able to express all these valuations in an option. I'm a little skeptical. Yeah. And regarding transferable utility and life being involved, uh, we are wired to do a lot of things that the civilized society wouldn't like us to do. And we are also wired not to do a lot of things that the civilized society would like us to do. So I think there is nothing wrong with actually telling people that you should do something that you might not be wired to do. And they do it every So you're deciding whether to take, say, a small Uber to work or a large Uber, and you'll be safer in a large Uber. So if there is an accident, you'll die with a smaller probability, but you have to pay a little bit more. When you're buying a car on the safety features, model of the car and um, deciding whether to take any health insurance you have to make those decisions so people are making those decisions anyway and maybe to, to make them well so may but, i just uh, may, may i just add something if possible sorry yes well, let, let's just build the last comment and, and let me also say quickly that i don't i do not want people to live without knowing that they you can Truly contact me or Levant anytime you want if you have questions about the masters or 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 what are life and, and what's the path with any time to try to become an academic in the future and have these kinds of conversations with your friends on a on a Wednesday night and colleagues. So so please uh, reach us my my web my website or my email. You can schedule an appointment with me. Uh, sorry, Tridiv, go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, I mean, this is just a follow up uh, thought on Levin's comments. So sometimes it is very difficult for us individually to put a value on our lives or the lives of our loved ones. But sometimes, but it is very strange that we don't mind when the government does it, or some other authority does it. So perhaps uh, romance, I mean, I, I think what your paper is highlight or your, your, your model is highlighting um, or, or, or making us, perhaps our paper is making us think about that trade-off and, and, and that perhaps, how do I call it? Uh, 
that paradox in some sense. Uh, so, so, so it, it comes back to the question which I was asking. I mean, what do we really mean by efficiency here? I mean, efficiency can take various, uh, various different meanings. And, and so I, I, I find this a very interesting thought, which I had not, not thought of before, before your paper and Levin's questions. So thank you. Thank you very much. So there's actually someone in the audience, Santiago Bolio, who wants to raise his hand and wants to ask yes. a question. I, I would like to ask a question regarding the, the payment rule. Uh, uh, because you you said you can have negative bids, right? So yes. what would happen if instead of, uh, if I don't decide to, to bid a lot on myself, so I uh, go higher on, on the order that I would be vaccinated, but instead of that, I downbid uh, the the other the other participants in in this auction. Would this have a result in the externality price that I would have to pay at uh, at the end of the of the auction, or would it result in the same externality for the society that you said was the the actual price you were paying, not the the bid price, but the externality price? Yes, so the auction is strategy proof. So if you value vaccination a lot, then you should bid a lot on your own behalf rather than trying to um, submit negative bids on behalf of others. It will not be to your advantage to do so. If you were to submit negative bids on behalf of others, and then that would bring other people down and you up, then you would have to pay. And what you would pay is the externality you impose on others you know, by submitting negative bids on their behalf. And you cannot do better. It cannot be more profitable than sub to submitting a very high positive bid on your own behalf. OK. And regarding how you measure the, the externality cost, uh, I understand if, if you told me uh, this is the actual order we have we already have what is your bid and the place i would take and then uh, the people that would go down one position but at the beginning of the auction when there are no uh, pre-established positions how would you measure the externality or do you measure it once you know the position of everyone and knowing that you can measure okay if i were to go down one spot this would be that cost, and that's what I would be imposing on others. Yes, that's right, the second one. So it's the counterfactual. We compute two vaccination schedules or vaccination queues. One under the assumption that you bid what you have bid, and then according to the rules of the auction, we decide what the vaccination schedule looks like. And then the counterfactual is, suppose we take you out of the equation and you didn't participate and submit any bids, what would be the vaccination schedule in your absence? So that will be the counterfactual to which we're comparing and how we're computing the externality. Thank so you. You would, just re mm -hmm. you would just remove his bid or also what people bid on him? Just his bids. So yeah, just his bids. So I have one more comment, I, if nobody else has a comment. So another thing that would kill this idea is uh, interdependent values. Suppose that I like Emilio, we work together as a team in the masters and so on and so forth. So I bid something on him to get the vaccination. But then I realized that Emilio wants me gone so that he can get the whole directorship money for himself. So if it's a negative bit, and then you know I may end up revising what I think about his chances of living should be. Uh, so of course VCG uh, may uh, fail terribly uh, in case of interdependent values. I'm not quite sure if the environment you're describing is free of these kinds of interdependencies. Um, so that's the first thing that I'd like to say. And then I think it's also a little bit of manipulation on your part to say that uh, you know, this is incentive compatible and people are not going to sort of manipulate themselves because as we know, you know, your favorite economist's book has a large section about how we see G auctions are manipulable when people decide to get together. Once people get decide to get together and 
coordinate the interactions, of course, uh, there's a lot of manipulation that can happen. Now that you're thinking about families doing these things together, so on and so forth, I think that, uh, um, you know, um, uh, manipulation, manipulability uh, is going to come into the picture. Yes, the question here is when it comes into the picture, how bad it is. So kind of sometimes when I visit my mother, we go to a grocery store and we do groceries together and then we kind of collude on how much we're going to buy each of the thing, but we're not really affecting prices much and markets do not break down as a result. So I'm not sure if a family colludes, how bad it will be you know, for the total outcome. I do not have an answer to this. And one has also to imagine a counterfactual here we have this auction in which, every, in which everybody has a say through his bids can affect the outcome of the auction. An alternative is to have a couple of large players, uh, labor unions who are lobbying, say the government for a certain priority order. And at least you know, what I've proposed democratizes this process of lobbying and everybody can have a go at it. And I don't know what the outcome will be. Will it be better, will it be worse? What will be? So what Levent is saying is the mechanism is not strategy, uh, is not group strategy proof. It's strategy proof, but not group strategy proof. So that's true. Also in terms of families, you think that's not an issue in this environment? When it comes to public goods and health, there are no, no, no interdependencies in our valuations for these things. I can uh, really myself, you know, if I see him, you're going to hospital, what is it, Espanol in Polanco, and I was going to public hospital, and then I say, you know, how is my co-director going there and not going there? And so on and so forth. And when, when, when it comes to health services and health environments, I think that there are a lot of interdependencies in valuation. But his vaccination is in your utility function. So there is that interdependency. That's what motivates it to bid on his behalf, positively or negatively. I, I may change, having learned what my weight is in his utility function, I may want to change what his weight is in my utility function. So I was with the hospital thing, I was making a larger point that in these kinds of contexts, maybe interdependencies should be expected. They shouldn't be exceptions, rather the maybe the norm. Um, and in, in, in your particular context, it plays out the way I've just suggested. So you look, you know, you can, we, can, we can repeat the classical criticisms of VCG until the sun comes up again. That's right. And so I'm basically sort of the, the reason why I'm bringing all these things up is, you know, my papers on VCG mechanisms have not been published. So I have this vendetta against the VCG. So I'm taking it out on you. Okay, so Didi, do you want to say something? I think this should be the last question because it's getting late and people are still here. Thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, I, let, let me just mention that I've written uh, my and Emilio's emails in the chat box. Um, we really appreciate you being here with us. In fact, I'm ecstatic about it. So please send us emails about uh, anything that we've touched upon tonight. And of course, the master's program in economic theory. Uh, and we can continue our discussions over email. Yes, thanks a lot. Thanks everyone for being here. And thank you, Romance. It was a great presentation. I would bid for you if there were a option for the vaccine. How much? <laughs> a very large positive number. Interdependent so, values. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Why would I'm you want how much? I'm letting you know so that you change your valuation or your bid for me or whatever you plan it. And thanks everyone. And thanks again, Romance. This was great. I hope we and you communicated how we take this these questions seriously and we take our colleagues' work seriously. And we like discussing things like what just happened tonight. And I, I, I truly hope that everyone else in the audience enjoyed uh, the conversation and realized that, that, that this is a great job and a great life. So, so that hopefully you'll want to join us at some point into academia. Thanks a lot to everyone. I don't know if you want to say something before leaving, Romance. Thank you very much for attending. Thank you very much for your questions. I hope your VCG papers get published in the event. Oh, they won't. Yeah, yeah. There's one question. 
um, from Luis David Sosa Rodriguez. Okay, can go ahead. On the chat. No, it, it wasn't a question. It was just like, uh, congrats. It's the, the hands clapping, not the raise hand. Okay. Ah. Okay, good night to everyone. Thanks a lot for having been here. And again, thank you, Roman. This was great.